Now in this video we're going to be discussing briefly market research and conversation research. Now this is going not going to be an extensive tutorial but it will give you the opportunity to look at some websites that you can go to to determine what you should be talking about. You do need to have bait to attract people back to your website. Whether or not you're going to be writing blog posts or whether or not you're going to be doing videos not only do you need to be talking about those the right things on your website to keep people there, you need to be writing those things and putting those things um, across the internet to draw people back to you. Some of this, some of these things are going to be products you're going to be creating, going to be courses you're going to be create creating. All these things will lend themselves to people wanting to come back to your website. So, but you need to find out what people want to know. You need to find out what they're thinking about, what they're talking about, and what they're concerned about. One of the ways in which you do that is you are going to want to use Google Suggest. We're going to be talking about this later in the course, but when you go to Google and you start by typing in the first few words of your search, if I was to put low carb diet in there, you're going to see some other suggestions that Google would be giving the searcher. Now this is an indication that these are things that people are searching for, therefore they're relevant topics. These are in real time. You are going to look at keyword tools, you're going to look at some other things that will tell you basically what the keyword research has been over time, but these are real time results you're looking at and that's why you want to make sure that you look at them even if for no other reason to make a comparison to with what you find here with some of the other sources that you're going to be looking at in this video. You can do the same thing in YouTube.com and YouTube.com we're going to do the very same thing. We're just going to type in the few first few words of our search and then we're going to get some suggestions. Once again, these are searches that are done in real time. So you get the opportunity to find out what people are searching for and then you can then adjust what it is you're going to be using as bait, what it is you're going to be creating your course about, what it is you're going to be creating your blog post about. I'm going to look at Google News also and this is something that sometimes it's so basic that we don't look at them before we start looking to create content. This is where you can find the relevant content. You'll find about what people are reading about. You'll find out what people are discussing even if it's online. So you will want to then put in here your search term because if there's something recent that has happened you will want to know about it. So we're going to search the news for our term and you want to continue to find those terms that are relevant and then you want to put them back into Google News. As you find new terms, you're going to come back here and find out what the news is. Is there something that just happened? Is there some celebrity that really has started to, let's say if you're if you're working with a product, has there is there a new celebrity that's working with your product? You do want to find out what is going on in the news. Google News is a great way to do that. One thing that you can look at is Google Books Ingram Viewer. It will take a look at all the words in books over the course of a specific period of time. Now this is not done in real time. It's not always done most recently, but you can find out going back into time what people have written about. So it's another way of doing research, not necessarily cutting edge, but it is a way of confirming what people are talking about and thinking about. Naturally, you will want to do a search in Amazon. You'll want to find out what the best sellers are. You want to find out what people are buying. This will always give you an indication of where people's hearts and minds are and it will give you ideas on things you should be talking about, creating, and offering. So Amazon is yet another place where you must do research to find out. Amazon is the biggest, probably the biggest online retailer in the world. You do want to find out what it is that people are buying and what his people are doing when they're at Amazon. If you want to know what the conversations are in message boards and online forums, 
you can use a site called OMG ILI. Now, there are other sites that are similar to this one. I think there's one called Board Tracker. They range in what they do. OMG ILI is probably the most the most well-known. You're going to put your search term inside of their bar and you're just going to do a search and you will find out what has been talked about over the specific period of time. Was there anything that was talked about over the last day in message boards? And you can go backwards in time, right? You can go past the past year, past month, past year, all time. So you do want to use this because this will determine where people have discussed things inside of private forums. And there's really not necessarily another way in order to do this kind of search. So it's a great way of finding out what's going on inside of the message boards. Yahoo Answers is a great way to find out what people have questions about and we're willing to type in online. And when you go to Yahoo Answers, you are going to find the questions that people are asking and that they are trying to get answers for from other internet users. Now, it's not an exact way to do research, but you will find out what people genuinely have questions are and what their you know what the answers and discussion are so you'll see and the the subjects range so we're not just talking about internet marketing we're talking about probably subjects other than internet marketing because these are people that are coming to the internet for specific answers and they they found that uh, people will come to Yahoo answers because they want to give answers to position themselves as experts now so you will want to do your research now in, in addition to that if you want to answer some of the questions that Yahoo answers, that's a great way to get traffic back to your website. But if you want to find out what people are discussing and have questions about, use Yahoo Answers. Google has a marketing research page called Think with Google. If you want to find out where marketing research is, this is a little different. You're going to find topics that are written about by professionals, but Every so often you will find your subject matter in here and you will figure out or you will find out what is being done in the way of marketing products and services like those that you may be thinking about. So using Think with Google is another way of getting more intelligence on what people are or how people are marketing, how people are selling a particular, uh, particular line of products or services. Last but not least, you will be determining what keywords people are using when they type into Google when they do a search. And this is the AdWords keyword tool. You're probably very familiar with it if you've been doing marketing any length of time. And you will be typing in the keywords, your basic terms. You can find out what related keywords people are looking at, what related terms people are actually using. This is, once again, it's probably one of the things that it's a it's a necessary thing, but you still need to do all of the other ways. You still need to take a look at all those other ways because they will give you real time information. What you're looking at in the keyword planner is not real time information. It's the information that Google is giving advertisers to help them to advertise effectively but it's not necessarily going to give you real-time information in order for you to create content and bait to get people back to your website. So, of course, you will use the Google Keyword Planner, and of course, you'll do that, but make sure that you're using these other things that we have discussed in this video. So that's it for your market research, uh, keyword research. You can actually use this in order to narrow down your niche, you can narrow down your topic area, and you can create bait to get people back to your site. With that, thanks. I will see you in the next video. In this course, we are going to be talking about free or low-cost ways to get traffic to your product, to your service, to your offering, or whatever it is that you are doing in marketing. Now, in the course, we will not be discussing SEO, uh, Facebook ads, or pay-per-click, or PPC. You could do an entire course on any of those subjects, and you would only be scratching the surface. So we are going to focus our attention on the traffic methods without those three big, broad subjects. 
Now we're going to first lay some foundations. In other words, what do you need to have in place in order to maximize your traffic? And then basically throughout the course, we're going to walk step by step and step in over the shoulder video methods that show you how you can do things today. These are going to be things that are actionable. We're going to do a mini series in social media. We're going to do a little mini series in YouTube. And we're going to go through several methods that you can undertake in order to get traffic to your website. Now, for the best success in the course, you want to make sure that you have done the foundational elements. The foundational elements that we go over in the beginning of the course, make sure that you have those things in place before you attempt to make application of the principles in the course. Once you have those things in place, then begin to apply the traffic videos to your market. Adapt them to whatever your niche is. Adapt them to your uh, particular service or product offering. Whatever it is that you're doing, this course is going to be adaptable to you if you want to get traffic to something that you have available for other people on the internet, even if that's just content, even if you are doing AdSense as a business model, you can use this, uh, this course in order to get traffic to your page. <laughs> Okay, hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we are talking about home base, and you might wonder what that means. Basically, you need to have some place where you're going to be directing your traffic for your offers, for your list building, and everything you're going to need in order to maximize the traffic that you're going to be getting. Now, you'll notice I'm inside of cPanel. Now, if you don't know what that is, it is the backside of your hosting and what we are going to use in order to install our blog. If you don't have hosting right now, you want to get hosting that has cPanel. And you, <clears throat> with that cPanel, what we're going to do is get inside of this, con and really cPanel just means control panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go very quickly, we're going to go to Fantastico and click the little smiley face there. Fantastico is going to give us a number of options. We're going to choose WordPress in order to build our site. And we're just going to click New Installation, wherever we want it to be. If we want it to be in a specific subdirectory, that's where we're going to put it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to put that in the subdirectory called Massive. And we're just going to write in an administrator name and password. And then an admin. I'm going to, go, I'm going to do that off screen and then come right back. Now you're going to fill in all this information very briefly, and then you're just going to click install WordPress, and then you will be ready with your site. And it looks like I put a trailing slash in there, so I'm going to have to go back and then click install again, and it will install. So I put that wrong slash in there, and that's why I did that, you, so don't make the same mistake. I'm going to click finish installation, and my site will be built. Okay, so I'm going to go to my uh, domain name, or my new domain name here, or my new site. I'm going to click in the login and password, and then I will be inside of my dashboard. Now, there are lots of ways that you can use WordPress, and there are lots of tutorials available uh, where, that will show you how to do that. And you want to have a place where you're going to be hosting your offers, and you want to be able to write copy and do those things. So what we've done is we've put this in place. You need to, at the very least, have a website in place. If you are inexperienced in doing this, uh, please make sure that you at least get your WordPress site set up and then go through a few tutorials on how to maximize the use and basically put a basic post inside of WordPress. Once you have a site, you will be ready for the first step and we're going to start talking a little bit about tracking and how you are going to know whether or not your offers are successful. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in the next video. Okay, now in this video, you're looking right now at a blank WordPress site, and the reason that we're doing that is we want to start by talking about some foundational things that you need to have in place. 
and before you start adding content before you start sending traffic to a, to your site or even if you're going to send people to a landing page where your offer is there's some things that you want to know about those visitors while they're coming before they you know before they start coming in big numbers and that is tracking and so you are going to want to first find out where those are where those visitors are coming from and what they're doing now one of the best ways to do that is to get access to your own Google Analytics account and basically Google Analytics the site that you're looking at right in front of your screen is free and, and it is as simple as they have it here on screen you're gonna sign up for Google Analytics you're gonna add a tracking code to your page and then you will then get reports either uh, via online or you can have those reports sent to you that will tell you on a daily basis what is happening with your audience what's happening with those who are looking at your offer so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click the sign up button here and I'm gonna go through the process again it's simple pretty simple and free and then you're gonna get access to a lot of tools you're gonna to be putting directly on your website okay now I am inside of my uh, new account and I'm just gonna go with the default settings I'm gonna put in um, I'm gonna put in a name I'm gonna put in my website website name and then we are going to I leave those as a default you can check those off if you uh, don't want to have them and you're gonna click the button that says get a tracking ID okay you're gonna accept the analytics terms of service and starting Google Analytics is pretty much as simple as that you're gonna get access to for your first website they're gonna give you a tracking code now that's obviously HTML code that you're gonna put someplace in your website now when you're using this with WordPress there are some ways to do that automatically you can do this with a plugin I'm gonna show you how to do that inside of WordPress here in a minute but once again if you're not using WordPress if you're just using a website HTML you're just gonna take this entire script it's HTML script and you're gonna put it uh, someplace on your website before the body tags in so let's go ahead and install this inside of our WordPress site just for the sake uh, so you'll be able to see uh, that it can be done and then you'll have to uh, adapt this to wherever your site or wherever your offers are going to be coming from now I'm going to come inside of here and I'm just going to go to my plugins I'm going to type in Google Analytics to search all the plugins that are available inside of WordPress okay you've got lots of options available to you all of which have been related and people think highly of so uh, just uh, pick one and then you will then um, be able then to install Google Analytics I'm just gonna install this one here at the top okay then I'm gonna come inside of my WordPress dashboard click on Google Analytics here and then I'm gonna look for the web property ID that Google Analytics gave me and that's pretty much gonna be that number right there I'm gonna cut and paste that number I'm gonna copy it then I'm just gonna drop it right in there and then my website will be ready then to start tracking visitors okay once I save those changes then all I'll need to do then is start getting my reports inside of Google Analytics now, if you want to know what Google Analytics does it pretty much does just what they say it does um, it's gonna help you to know who the people are who are coming to your website you're gonna know where they're coming from what websites they're coming from they're gonna give you demographic information on who they are Google Analytics is also gonna trace where they're going on your website so they'll be able to kind of track the path that they're going which pages are gonna be accessing that's gonna be important because that's gonna determine how you structure your website and then you're gonna see how long they're staying and what they're doing while they're on that page now we do want to take a look at another tool that's going to give you some of those other things Now you can get these reports every day the thing about Google Analytics is this is not going to be real-time information it's going to be good information but it's not going to be given to you necessarily in real time so one of the things you want to do is to look at some other tools that are going to give you some information that you will be able to use pretty much in real time and make some decisions about I'm going to show you the, one of those tools right now now one of the tools you're going to be looking to use is visual website optimizer you can actually get started on a 30-day trial for free once you start getting traffic to your particular page or to your offer this is going to be a great tool because there are going to be a couple of things you're going to need 
in order to maximize the traffic. One thing in particular you're going to be able to do, as you can see here, uh, A and B testing. So you'll be able to tell by making certain changes to things that are on your page how your visitors respond. You'll also be able to get access to heat maps. In other words, what are people doing when they get to your page? That'll give you that'll make it helpful to you because you'll be able to see is something on your page turning them off? Is something making them click away? Or are they only reading so far? Because you want to then start tailoring your copy or your content to your actual visitors. This is going to be very helpful information. You'll be able to look at multivariate testing. And as you can see here, you'll be able to make a combination of changes. That's going to tell you uh, things that you can do uh, to you're going to make different uh, different changes in groups that will tell you what they're doing to your visitors. So this is going to be very helpful information. And you'll see companies that you recognize, big and small, that are actually using it. Right? You'll, some of you may recognize GetResponse, the autoresponder company, and companies as big as Hyundai. So this is a valid practice. You do need to know what visitors are doing when they come to your website so that you will be able to make the right changes in order to get them to do the right things. It's not enough just to get traffic, obviously. You've got to get those, uh, those visitors that are coming to your page to convert. So as you start getting traffic, you are going to want to have something like visual website optimizer in place in addition to uh, Google Analytics. Now, the other thing is, of course, now there is a truth trial. There is a cost to visual op website optimizer, and uh, the, the cost is going to be $50 a month. Once you've actually completed that trial, it's going to be $50 a month, so you do want to make sure you're going to have uh, that kind of uh, those kind of funds in place. Now, obviously, once you start generating commissions or making sales, this is not going to be a big deal for you. And obviously, when you get to that point, you can actually start the first 30 days for free. So uh, this is a great way for you to tell and to make changes and to be able to determine what those changes are actually doing. Now, there are a couple of other things that you want to look at. There are other softwares available, uh, such as lead pages. We can show you that briefly. Um, there are certain uh, templates that you can put landing pages in place. Uh, there's Instapage. There are lots of templates available around where you can create a sales page and you can really get access to what your uh, what your visitors are doing. But you do want to start with Google Analytics, right? Getting that code in place, and then you also want to get Visual Website Optimizer in place so that you'll be able to tell what people are doing when they actually come to the page, so that you can start making changes based on what they are doing. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. We are now looking at our WordPress blog again, and one of the things we want to discuss in this video is the fact that you want to make sure that as your visitors come, that you have the opportunity to interact with them and market with market to them a second time. And that means that you're going to have to have a couple of things in place. We're talking about those foundational elements. One of those things that you're going to have to have, obviously, is you're going to have to have an autoresponder. Now, you're looking at Get Response right now. There are several available. There's AWeber and Eye Contact and lots of different autoresponders available. Get Response does have a free trial. One of the benefits that Get Response does have is that they've got built into their pricing a landing page feature. That will allow you to build landing pages with ease and a rather affordable price. I think it's $15 in order to build landing pages where you can use GetResponse in order to do that. And it's going to tie directly into your uh, your autoresponder. Now, obviously, um, if you don't want to use GetResponse, there are other things that you can use. There are software options called lead pages we talked about that in one of the videos you can actually pay I think it's either 37 or 67 dollars lead pages will give you the ability to drag and drop create landing pages so that you can collect leads you can also use another site we talked about this one before called Instapage. now these are places where you can drive traffic to a particular place where you're just going to have 
one offer. The only thing that's going to be on the page is going to be your offer. It's all you're going to be able to talk about. Now, obviously, if you're using a blog in order to drive traffic, now we're looking at a very popular blog on the web, you still want to be able to collect names and email addresses. So you're looking right here. This person has something at the top of their site above the fold called Connect with Grow Map. That means that you can actually connect with them by getting uh, here. But you also want to be able to collect names and email addresses. Now, uh, this is obviously not totally above the fold, which is where you'd want uh, them want to be in order to collect names and email addresses. You want to have it so that people do not uh, have to scroll in order to do that. But again, at least this person is attempting to collect names and email addresses. I mean, you can see that in some other places. One of the, the uh, sites called ProBlogger, very popular blog. You'll see there that ProBlogger has the opportunity for you to subscribe to their newsletter. They've got here at the top a bar that's going to give you the opportunity to, once again, uh, uh, participate in their community. You want to give visitors the opportunity to join you so that you can collect their names, email addresses, not only so you can market products and services to them, but that they can also get a chance to see what it is you're doing. They can see the value that you're offering. A very important part of the traffic process is getting names and email addresses because you can then generate your own traffic by sending an email. That's why this is important. So um, it is another way of driving traffic, but you must have this in place to collect names and email addresses. So the minimum, once again, is you must have an autoresponder company. I'm going to click back to get response. And then, of course, you need to have a way of collecting those names and email addresses either on your blog, as ProBlogger does and GrowMap does. There are some other examples that I, I was going to show you. Here's a person that's actually doing a review site they're reviewing a product called continuity income videos of course they are also collecting names and email addresses so even if you are marketing affiliate products you still want to collect names and email addresses because once again once you have the names and email addresses you can drive traffic yourself to a particular offer by sending an email so but you must have these things in place you're going to see the example of a landing page here um, here's a person that actually does a podcast so they don't necessarily produce a product or service but they do a podcast and one of the things that they do is they have different landing pages for their events right so you can come to this person's event and you'll this is an example of a landing page where the only thing available to you is just this offer the only thing you can do is put in your name and email address to this particular offer now of course the thing about a blog is you've got other things going on right there are other things for people to click on they could get you know they could get distracted and go to these other places but once again if you build familiarity with your visitors you'll be able to drive traffic so the point in what we are talking about in this video is that you must create the opportunity for your visitors to be able to put their email address in so that you can collect it inside of your autoresponder so that you can then email them in order to drive traffic to wherever it is that you want. And, of course, you'll need to have a landing page or a place where they will find it attractive in order to do so. OK, so you must have those foundations in place, whether you're using a web page or a landing page. Make sure you've got your autoresponder in place and that you have some place that you are collecting those names and email addresses for that initial bit of traffic. OK, so with that, thanks. And I will see you in the next video. Hello now. Welcome back. Probably the final piece that we need to talk about that you need to have in place as a foundational piece is to make sure that the copy that you have on your website, wherever you're promoting from, is really going to be converting your visitors to whatever you want them to do. Now, obviously, one of the ways in which you can have that writing done for you, you can have that copywriting done for you, is to have it outsourced. You can go to a place like Elance. You can go to a place like Odesk. Any other freelancing sites where you want to have review blog posts, blog posts written, you can have sales pages written, you can have squeeze page written, 
all you need to do is to hire those things out find the appropriate price and you can do that on these sites now that may not necessarily be what you want to do and it also might be cost prohibitive before you really know if you're going to be making money on a particular project now there is a way for you to find the copy um, of other people that has been written that you know has been successful and one of the ways in which you find successful affiliates is you type in, you go to Google, and what you're going to do is you're going to type in JV Affiliate Leaderboard. Now you can type that in, you can type that, those search parameters in for any product that you know has been sold, any internet marketing product. And you're going to be able to find the leaderboard of some of the internet marketing products that have been sold. Now why are you going to do this? Because you want to find out how they are marketing you want to find out if they're using a review blog you're going to find out if they're doing it by email and if you're if they're doing it by email you want to get on their email marketing list so that you can take their copy that you're writing in email and swipe it you want to find out how they're doing their squeeze pages and sales pages you want to find out how they are writing their review blog posts let's take a look now we've got one right here at the top you can see here easy video suite Right, so we can just click right in there to see the leaderboards. We want to find out who the successful affiliates were. So here we have a list of affiliates who did extremely well. So what we want to do is to find out how they're marketing. We want to find out what they're writing in terms of copy. And I can mention all these names. They may be names you are familiar with. They may not be names you're familiar with. However, it doesn't really matter if you don't necessarily have a good handle on getting started on writing the right kind of copy to start with before you start analyzing how your visitors are responding to it. You can start by finding successful JVs and you can find them by using those search parameters that I just talked about and looking at the leaderboard and then going to their particular sites, going to them and looking to see how they're marketing. Most of these people are probably going to be marketing by email but you will find that some of them will have squeeze pages and review pages that will help you in order to put yours together now one other thing that you can do is you can go inside of one of the affiliate networks like JVZoo or Warrior Plus and you can see the cop you can see products that have sold extremely well and the reason that you want to do this is that you want to start looking at the sales pages of products that have sold extremely well. So you're going to need a, an account with JVZoo. And you're going to get an account with JVZoo or Warrior Plus, either one of those sites or both, and you want to start looking at sales pages. You want to start looking at how the copy is written. And in general, once you do that, you can actually look at some of the sales pages. This is an old product, so we're going to take a look at this product. We'll take a look and see their particular sales page. Okay, so here's a product that sold 8,000 copies. Now, obviously, the product was probably one that was in demand, but one of the things you want to take note of is some elements of copywriting that are going to be in anything, whether or not you're writing a blog post, putting together a sales page, or even a squeeze page. You're going to have a headline. As you can see right here, there's a headline there. And you want to have your headline to make sure that it grabs the attention of your reader. In some cases, you can actually use a video where you're going to put the entire sales presentation or the entire sales letter in the form of a video where you're literally going to talk the uh, talk the visitor through what it is they're going to be looking at talking them through what it is they're going to be seeing talk, talking them through what you're offering them you're also going to have little copywriting elements such as sub headlines in here as you can see right here you're also going to be able to see that there are stories Right, so that there is a connection to the actual uh, person who's visiting the site. You're also going to see what's called proof, or in other words, what's the proof that the concept is going to work. You want to have these elements in your sales present presentation, whether or not it's a sales page, whether or not it's a squeeze page, even if it's a review blog post, these are copywriting elements. And if you look closely at a successful sales page, you can adapt those elements into whatever it is that you're offering. And that's how you're going to convert visitors. That's how you're going to help visitors to uh, make the decision that they want to make 
in order to buy or in order to uh, opt in or whatever it is, you want to help them along in the process with your copy. Now, once again, of course, you can have copy written for you. However, if you if that's cost prohibitive and you're not at that point, a very good way is to look at successful products. We just talked about you can also look at successful affiliates. Okay, one of the keys is also going to be graphics. You want to have a good graphic presentation. You'll see that here. Um, and you want to make sure that your graphics presentation is not going to be any different than what's expected. So where you see uh, graphics, 3D boxes, if there's a 3D box in your industry, you want to make sure that you have 3D boxes in your industry because that's pretty much what people are going to respect and that it is well done. So make sure that you have these elements of copywriting. Make sure you have the the graphical elements outsource what you can if you are not a graphics person once again you're gonna want to go to places like Elance and have them outsource if you uh, are not necessarily comfortable with Elance you can certainly go to the warrior form and have it e outsource as you can see the warrior form has entire uh, subforms dedicated to people who can do this work for you members looking to hire you Right, classified ads, there are a number of ways that you can start advertising to find people who can either do the graphics for you and write the copy for you. You can find these people and they will, a can and will do this work for you. So uh, this is something that once again, you have the maximum flex flexibility. You also want to make sure that you are doing something that you can tell whether or not it's working with some of your analytical tools. So as you begin to take note of some of these affiliates that you are seeing over and over again, constantly showing up, you want to take a look not only at their process, but you definitely want to take make sure that you're looking at their copy so that you can incorporate those elements that they are obviously using over and over to be successful on their launches and on their promotion so that you can do the very same thing as you start to drive traffic to your place. Now, once again, this is a foundational element. It's one of those things that you need to have in place, good copy. And once again, if, you don't, if you're not ready to outsource it, you can do this by what's called swiping right, the elements of successful copy. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Introduction to social media. We're about to do a series on social media traffic videos, and there are some common elements in what you're going to see in the videos that you'll want to consider for all the social networks. Now, we're going to be covering six of the social six of the major sites, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Now, we could cover some of the image sites like Instagram and Foursquare, but all these elements are pretty much going to be the same even if you were to cover those. Now, we're not going to cover those image sites. They are social networks, they are viable, they are up and coming, but you still basically want to make sure you're com you are uh, participating on the major six sites that we've mentioned prior to this. The first thing you're going to want to do, and probably the most important, is to make sure your entire profile is filled out. So every place where you have uh, the opportunity to put some income, so to put some information about your site, about your company, about what you're offering, you want to take that opportunity. Any place where you can put images or graphics, you want to take the opportunity and put them in there. Most of the, uh, I, I, you know, if, if there's a problem in social media when marketers first get started, it's not fully filling out their profile or using them, you know, without, without images or without pictures. You want to make sure that you have the entire profile filled out and that you really do look like a real person because that is the key to being able to connect on social media. People want to connect with real people. If your profile is not filled out, then you are almost saying that it's not important enough it's not important enough for you to reveal who you are in order to connect and that's not going to lend you long-term results on social media now there are eight things that you want to consider called the eight C's in social media context 
In other words, you want to make sure that you are focusing on a subject area or a niche. We're going to be talking about market research, but focus on the on on how you build your profile. Focus on how you build your following. Focus focus on what you share. Context is important, and you want to keep things centered around the context for which you want to. Do you want to get people back to your website and what your website's about or what your offers are about? Context, connections. So you should be constantly making connections, constantly getting people to be one of your friends or followers. You should be doing that on a continual basis. That is an ongoing process, and you need to grow the number of people who you're connected to on social media because that will widen your reach. Every person has their own personal network. Every time they share your content in their network, you get more exposure. So you need to be continually making connections. You should be commenting whenever someone uh, comments on something that you post in terms of information. And you should be commenting on things that are not your information. So one of the ways in which you connect with people is to uh, comment on their posting or comment on their video Wherever there's content and you want to really get to know someone, you want to use social media to do it, one of the ways you do that is to be commenting on what it is that they post. Fourth, company. Typically, you'll get the opportunity to post or to have a business and personal profile. You'll want to use the best of both. So where you get the opportunity to have a company page as well as your personal profile, make sure that you are maximizing your use of both, especially if the purpose of your being on social media is to get traffic. Capturing. Capturing means that you need to have a way ready to get names and email addresses. So you should be funneling people to a capture page or funneling some funneling people to something on that platform that will allow you to collect their names and email addresses when they're ready to get more information from you. This is not something that you should be doing once you're getting traffic. You should be doing this before you ever get a person to visit any of your social platforms or website. You should have a way of directing people so that you can capture their names and email addresses. Combining and condensing. There are a lot of tools available that will help you to manage social media. It's almost impossible to do all six major sites and the minor ones and to do it consistently and to do it with uh, a, a, a fair amount of activity without some tools. There are tools available wherever you have them, take advantage of them so that you can maximize your presence. Consistency is the key. So whatever it is that you're going to be doing, even if you post once per day on all your so all your major social networks, be consistent about that. When people know what to expect, they will then uh, they will then start to gravitate towards your content. Most of the time if people do not uh, necessarily you, you feel like you're putting out good effort and good content it's probably because they don't know when to find you they don't know when to catch you they don't know when you're going to to post something be consistent stay on a schedule be consistent about what you're doing on social media and finally commerce it's recognition that all of the social platforms are in the business of making money they are going to change things and you should be ready ready for the inevitable situation where they're going to want you to pay in order to reach customers on their platform. That should be something you should be planning for. That should be something that you should anticipate. And when social networks change and they evolve, they do because they need to make money and they're in it for a profit. So expect to be able to – expect to have to pay for something that you might be doing free now expect to have to pay for it so you want to start building up your following you want to start building up your ability uh, to contact people but you have to do that with the anticipation that at some point uh, uh, the, the social network will be attempting to move you into paid advertising now there are always going to be methods and short-term loopholes that work for a period of time it doesn't mean that what what uh, that they're invalid, but it only means that they're going to work for a short period of time. The things that we've talked about in this video will always work. They will work in the in the they work now in the future. If you take this approach towards social media, you will be able to get traffic and to get that traffic continually, and you don't have to worry and look over your shoulder if the social network changes something that seems to be adverse to you. 
Finally, some of the best advice that marketers are uh, providing or social media experts are giving to people is that if you're new to social media, you want to master one network first. So if your company benefits the most or your product benefits the most from Facebook, master that. Twitter, YouTube, whatever the social network is, master one at a time. Understand how the conversations flow. Understand how something goes viral. Then go to move to the other social networks to add in your your uh, what we call combining and condensing or the tools that will help you to manage social media. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. We are looking at Facebook, obviously, and if you have been around social media any length of time or internet marketing, you undoubtedly have a Facebook account. If you don't have one, uh, it's fairly easy to open one. We will not cover opening a, opening a Facebook account. We'll assume that you already have one. And what are you going to do in order to drive traffic? Well, there's several ways that you can do that. And one of the best ways to do that is to simply connect with people that have the same interests and are going to be interested in the products and services that you buy. Now, obviously, uh, people will not be looking for products and services in their newsfeed. People typically go to internet marketing, or people typically go to Facebook in order to connect on a personal level. You'll see most of these posts are personal; they have nothing to do with internet marketing. However, uh, the same rule applies in Facebook as it does in any other social media uh, platform, which is you want to use what Gary Vandercheck. Uh, calls jab 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 right hook a lot of the people who are in the news feed that you're looking at right now uh, they are uh, internet marketers but they are sharing personally they're sharing socially and then they are also sharing offers and you can see here here's a gentleman that's sharing an offer but he shares personally at times uh, here is someone else further down who is sharing uh, something that is business related but he shares personal also so sharing on your Facebook your news feed the easiest way which is pretty much you're just gonna be able to you're just gonna go right up here to your status and you're just going to share something you're gonna share a link you're gonna share something that people are going to want to buy now if you are not connected to people that are going to buy your products and services, then sharing in your newsfeed is not going to be an effective method in order to get traffic to your site or traffic to your offers. You must be connecting to people that are going to be interested in your offers. If you're doing in the make, if you're uh, participating in the make money online niche that means you're going to need to be connecting to marketers you're going to need to be connecting to people who are buying internet marketing products well how do you find those people well one of the ways that you can do that is to find groups of people that are connected or people people that are gathering around internet marketing uh, for for example here's a place where people are doing make twenty dollars online in 24 hours that's an internet marketing group whether or not you can join that group uh, it may be an open or a closed group but you can find other marketers to connect to and those are going to going to be the people that you want to uh, you want to have as part of your friends so that when you share posts they will actually see them Okay, and you can see in this group there are well, there are over 27,000 people. Uh, here are some of the other members, and there are tons of members in here, and all of these people are undoubtedly looking to make money online. That's one of the ways in which you find people to connect with in order to get them into your newsfeed. Now you're only going to have 5,000 people that you can add to your personal, uh, your personal fan or your personal profile that you're going to be able to market to in this way. So once you get up to 5,000 people, then you're going to need to go the second route, which is to join groups. Now you'll see here that Facebook is going to suggest some groups to you, and they're going to suggest those groups to you based on the friends that you have. So in this particular case, this profile that I'm using, I'm going to get suggestions for internet marketing groups. Here's an affiliate marketing review groups. You want to join these groups, right? There's no limit on the groups you can join. Now you want to go ahead and just click join. 
uh, some of these groups. Now, all the groups are going to have different rules. Some of the groups you're going to be able to uh, post your offer. Some of the groups you're not going to be able to post your offer or affiliate offers, and you will not be able to participate in that way. But you want to follow the rules inside of the group, and each one of the rules, is gonna, each one of the groups is going to tell you what the rules are. But you're going to be looking inside of those groups to connect with people personally. Right? This is the way you're going to get traffic. You want to get them on your personal profile, and you want to send out those uh, those those uh, those links. You want to send out those status updates that are going to get people connected. Now, of course, the other way that you can actually get people connected is to use your own fan page. And let's talk about what that means right here. Okay, what you are looking at here is you are looking at a fan page on Facebook. And obviously, one of the first steps that you are going to have to undertake is to get people to like your fan page. Now, you can obviously, you can pay to have that done on sites like Fiverr, or you can undergo an, or a more organic process where you try to get people who you know are interested. You want to get people connected, and you want to invite people to the fan page that you know are going to have an interest in what you're doing. You can definitely promote your page and once again this is a more of a paid advertising um, a, a method of getting people to that page but we're talking about free or low cost methods so what do you want to do what are you going to do in order to get people to like your page well in this case we're operating in a niche that's outside of internet marketing what you would do is you would create a page in the niche that you are operating in and what you want to do then is you want to then invite your friends right you want to invite your friends from your personal profile uh, to your fan page because you know they're interested because you selected them on the basis of their interest now so how are you going to do that well you're just going to come right down here to invite and it's going to give you the opportunity to invite all of your friends and that's one of the reasons why you want to be focused in terms of how you invite your friends to your personal profile in order then to invite them to a fan page where they're going to get more focus on your particular business now uh, in when you are posting to your personal profile the uh, the 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 rule of three or four to one is in effect but when you're posting to your fan page you can be a little more direct and focused on the business you can do things that are going to lead to more lead generation and so uh, what you want to do with your local with your fan page is you want to make sure that you get an opt-in form someplace on that page. And one of the easiest ways to do that is that you are going to then want to use a site called 22 Social. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put that right here in the search bar and just type in 22 Social. And when you get to 22 Social, what you want to do is to install the 22 Social app. And what this 22 Social app is going to do is going to allow you to put a tab or another page or an application onto your fan page where you are going to be able to put whatever you want on that particular page. Now, obviously, this is how we're going to funnel traffic back to our website as well as collect names and email addresses from inside of Facebook. So now let's go ahead and just click the install button to 22 social. When we do that, we're just going to click like to get the app as they're instructing us to do. And we are then going to install the free app. Now 22 social does have a cost associated. You, you can, you can uh, definitely, if you decide to do more with 22 social, once you get uh, the hang of it, you can do that. But we want to basically get um, our website blog and our lead capture page connected to our Facebook page. So now we are going to then click the free app install. Now, once you get inside of that free app, they're going to ask you to connect your fan page and you're just going to simply click create the app. 
Now, once you're inside of the app, you can then customize it in order to get the maximum traffic to your page. Now, there are a couple of things that you're going to want to do in order to do that. And all of your buttons here are at the top that you're going to want to use inside of 22 Social. Now, one of the first things we're going to talk about here is the content. And you can change the header to, to say what you want. That's not the most important thing here. One of the things that you're going to be able to change is you're going to be able to change the media, which is, for the most part, whatever video that you're going to want to have playing, whether or not you want to have it auto-playing or whether or not you want to just have it as part of this particular extension of your fan page, you can do that. So you can put a YouTube video in there where you've got some other choices, whether you use Vimeo or you've got Audio Stitcher or you can do Google Hangout if you want to do your, uh, your, your stream of Google Hangout. You can do that here. You can do a live stream there or you know whatever it is that you want to do in terms of your media you can do that here from inside 22 social now uh, you can also customize the button that's there um, right now it says 22 social Facebook page and you've got a link to 22 social now obviously you want to make that link to your website right so you know in this particular case we're gonna change that we're gonna change that to our website and then we're gonna change this to out the title of our of what we want our, our text to be on the button so we've got the massive traffic button I see uh, so we've got a blueprint there and so we're gonna just click preview so we can see how it's gonna look right we try to get massive traffic blueprint in there if we could and then you want to make sure to save your changes so what you want to do is you want to customize each and every one of the things, the details here. You've got contact information there. You've got your social links. It's, this is a very helpful app. It's free to use, and it's really customizable. Now, what's uh, one of the great parts about this is that now what you have on your fan page is you have a page that has all of the activity that you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to be able to use in order to collect leads. So, what are you going to do? So, you're going to go back to your fan page here, and what you'll notice there is you've got a click here button on the front of your fan page nice and prominent well that button is now going to lead to that fan page tab that we just created so whatever your call to action is you want to put it into an image now you're going to change the image I'll show you how to change the image here um, we're just going to go right here we're going to click that down arrow and then we're going to click that pencil there and we can literally change that image to anything that we want if we want to say uh, you know get your free report if you want to say uh, 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 live event whatever we want to say we can do it on that image and we can change it and it will lead us direct to that uh, that fan page tab or application where we have the opportunity to collect names and email addresses that's how we're going to funnel traffic from Facebook back to our site that we know is is, uh, is targeted and actually wants the things that we offer okay so now uh, so the so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to try to get people who are interested to our fan page and we're going to try to attract them to our fan page tab and so every time we have something that we're offering on the fan page tab we're literally going to put it in our status for our fan page we're also going to take that same fan page tab and we're going to put it in our status for, for our personal account also giving people the opportunity to like the page and then go on to to uh, see what it is that we have to offer there now there are some other applications that we can use that will be helpful one in particular that's going to be helpful to you is if you do video marketing at all or video promotion is you want to be able to demonstrate those or show those emails or show those videos on your Facebook page and you can do that effectively with one of the uh, YouTube applications we're going to show you that here in a minute and then we're going to connect it to our fan page and we're going to click add page tab so once we now have the tab created we're going to go inside of our admin panel and then what we're going to do is we're going to put in our YouTube account name whatever that is and once we do that then what we'll have is we will have the ability then to have our videos promoted here on YouTube we can have a featured video here now in this particular case I'm just gonna write in uh, a, the uh, 
video or the video channel of a marketer there on YouTube. We're not going to put a, a, a featured video in there. We're going to click Save Settings. And there you'll have all of the videos available for your channel. Right? You can ha actually have a you can have a, a have you can actually customize this video uh, right here uh, that you want to have then on your Facebook tab. So what that does is that means that if we go back to our fan page here, we can then look at this video and we can then decide that we want to have this uh, we want to have that channel but we can then change the thumbnail to say something like uh, visit our you know you know our, our YouTube channel or or low carb TV or something that's going to be eye catching something that's going to be attention grabbing to make people come see that page and we can also change this w exchange this with any one of these you know with these uh, 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 these these buttons so that our buttons are actually the ones that we want to see so we want to have people visiting our content and the content is ultimately going to funnel people back to your website now so the 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 benefit here is that if you've got video content on YouTube where you're directing people back to your website video is engaging and you can get people to watch your video and then have a desire to go back to your website because they like your content Okay, so you can do all of that on Facebook, and as you begin to draw people to your fan page, getting more likes, you want to have these buttons here that are going to give them the opportunity to experience your content so that then they then want to go on to visit your website to take a look at your offers. Okay, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. We are now looking at Google Plus in terms of driving traffic to your website. Google Plus is not necessarily as heavily trafficked as Facebook in terms of a social network, but it is very important in your overall marketing mix, and you are going to want to make sure that you're participating at least on a minimal level. Let's take a look at some of the things that you should be participating in because I think you might be surprised at the numbers of people that are involved in certain areas especially when it comes to internet marketing now in particular one of the things that we want to look at first before we start talking about the basics of posting and things like that are communities And when you click on the Communities tab, it won't take you long to realize that there are a lot of communities and there are a lot of people involved in these communities. And the numbers rival some of the numbers that you may see in Facebook. In particular, you'll see some of these numbers at 12,000, 65,000, 50,000. All of these are internet related or internet marketing related uh, uh, communities and people are participating now whether or not people are participating at the level at which they participate on Facebook that will be debated and every group is going to be different but this is definitely going to be a way for you to connect with the kind of people that are wanting to buy internet marketing products and if you don't if you're not if internet marketing is not your niche all you're really going to do within the communities is you're going to start looking for communities that are uh, that are dedicated in top Topic to your niche or your area let's say that you are looking at low carb dieting that's one of the things that we've talked about in this course well there are communities that are involved in low carb dieting now you'll need to do just as you would do with the Facebook groups you'll want to find out what the rules are you want to find out how people operate you don't want to go inside of these communities and just start posting your link you need to be a participating member and you need to build credibility so that people will come back and check out your profile the very same effect in Google Plus really applies here as it does in any social network. Jab, 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 right hook. Post to think, post to people's interests uh, for the first three or four posts, and then post something that's going to be of interest to yourself. Now, what you are trying to do in Google Plus are a couple of things. Of course, not you're not just in, interacting within the community. Let's go back to your uh, to your profile here. Now, as you would do with any social network, you want to make sure that your profile is completely filled out. Now, this is one that we're just using for the sake of the tutorial, 
and is not fully filled out. But you've got a lot of things that you can customize. You can customize the area where your profile photo is. You can customize your header. And you want to do that. And you want to do that in the same ways you would do with Facebook. You want to make sure you've got call to action and things that are going to make it attractive. You want to make sure that you're utilizing the area for photos. Photos that will give people an indication and allow them to connect with you at the personal level so they'll know that your business is a real business you are a real person you are someone that they should be worthy of connecting to you want to make sure your YouTube videos are connected to your Google Plus channel so one of the first things you're going to need to do inside of Google Plus is to go in and do your work you want to make sure that your profile is filled out and that all your services are connected the other thing is you want to let's take a look at the about section here And you've got a lot of room in order to do things to customize this for your benefit. You've got a tagline, an introduction, things that you can put in here, education, occupation, all of these things that you want to start thinking about in terms of how they will help you to connect with other people that are going to be interested in buying your products and services. Ultimately, you're using these profiles or you are working with these profiles so that you can build your professional status, so that you can build your opportunities to generate more traffic back to your site. And of course, the key here is going to be you want to make sure that all of your links are going to be pointing to the website where your offers are. Now, that's one of the benefits of working with some offers at the very least, where you are going to basically be using one domain, even though you might have many offers, especially to get started with. Now, of course, you will be able to move out to multiple domains, but you want to have only a few links you want to have one link where people can go back to in order to find out what it is that you are about and you can do that by making sure that your links here are are, uh, are in the right order and that you have the few there that you want people to actually visit so filling out your profile is going to be one thing that's going to be very important of course like any other social network you're going to want to be posting to your actual news stream. Now, one of the benefits of being part of Google Plus in terms of getting traffic back to your website is going to be, and we're going to be going over this in a separate video, is your ability to use Google Hangouts. And Google Hangouts allows you to do a live event and to have that event streaming on YouTube. And it is, and it is integrated into Google Plus um, at many different levels. And so this is one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you are connected, that you have all of your accounts ready on Google Plus, because everything that you do in terms of Hangouts and videos will get additional traction by your being connected on Google Plus. Now, there is another aspect to Google+, and uh, we said we weren't going to talk much about SEO, but this is a very important aspect of SEO. I'm going to go to a search result in order to show you that. Now, if I just type in the phrase low-carb diet into Google search, you're going to see a couple of things here. Of course, you're going to see a video show up and it's got the thumbnail here. But one of the other important things is that if you look here, here's an article written in January of 2014. And if you'll look there, you'll see the person's image there. And it makes her, it makes her content stand out and it almost draws your eyes there. Sure, she is 10th on the very first page of Google. However, she also is one of only two people that have a thumbnail there, which Google gives that person in order to signify, or in order to signify that they um, are an authority on a subject and so you want to be able to do that with your post you want them to show up in organic search and you want them to show up with that additional attention grabbing a uh, profile when Google gives it to you and the way that you do that of course is to set up authorship and you can't set up authorship without Google Plus now authorship is a process where Google verifies your accounts and they verify that you are the person producing the content that you are posting to this Google Plus page. You'll want to go to your search engine and type in Google Plus authorship and then follow the link to Google Plus authorship. 
And basically what you want to do is to make sure your Google Plus profile is linked to the content you create. You want to make sure your profile is linked to your blog and to your YouTube channel so that you have that opportunity to make sure that your post or your content is seen as an additional uh, seen along with the additional boost in authority by putting the image there as you see here on your uh, on your screen. So really, Google Plus is may, it may not necessarily be as heavily trafficked as some of the other social networks, but it is important in your overall marketing uh, scheme when you start thinking about whether or not you're going to be using YouTube videos, how much you're going to be using articles. Regardless, you definitely want to have authorship in all of them because it gives you the opportunity to rank your content in search. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. You are now looking at the social media platform, Pinterest. And obviously Pinterest is a couple of, there are a couple of distinguishing factors about Pinterest. First, the user base is primarily female 75 to 80 percent secondly the user base is primarily interested in images on a social level now most of what Pinterest is used for is branding however you can use Pinterest successfully to get traffic back to your website if you can create and put forward uh, interesting images now what I'm going to show you how to do here is how to edit a pin or a photo that you're going to be uploading to your account because that's going to be the most important thing that you're going to be doing now obviously you are going to pin an image and I'm going to just click this uh, I'm going to click this button right here and the, actually that's your profile what we're going to do is just click the pro button and we're going to upload a pin we're going to choose this image from our hard drive. Now what we're going to do is once we get our image there is we want to we want to write our description. Now this is going to be just like any other internet marketing activity that you're engaged in. Once you understand your niche and once you understand who you're marketing to and who you're trying to show these images to, you want to make sure that your description is keyword rich right here. You want to make sure that you're adding it to a pen board or a board that is keyword rich because that is going to help you to have your images found even within Pinterest now obviously we're using a sample image here and we're not really doing a real image uh, but we are going to want to make sure our description here is keyword rich I'm gonna just write in it so once we have our pen what we want to do is we want to edit that pen and we want to edit it so that we can then direct people that click the image or want to find out more about it back to the source and in this case we're going to put a link back to our blog now when we are writing these descriptions one of the things you want to do in, in consideration to your uh, to your blog is that you want to direct link not back to the home page but you want to direct link either to an offer or to a pre-sale page now pre-sale page is going to be pretty important especially when you're using image traffic uh, because you want people to make the association in their mind to whatever it is you're going to want to do when they when they get to your page your description we've already written so all we've done is we've edited the pen that we just put up and we have put it um, we have direct linked it to this website now and once again we would do it to a particular page we're going to save our changes and so now everyone that clicks on this image right they're they're going to uh, they're going to click this image let's send they're going to get access to the image and then what you're going to do is they're going to have the opportunity to visit the site so your objective in Pinterest is going to be the same thing as it is in any other social network and that is to make people interested in your profile one of the ways in which you do that is to post images that are relevant and that will give people a desire to either find out more about you or to click on the on the website back to your uh, back click on the link back to your website now in particular for internet marketing products 
Pinterest is not as effective as it is when you're working in other niches, such as weight loss, relationships, health and beauty. All of those things are very visual. Internet marketing is not very visual unless you really are creative in terms of how you draw people in. But these niches that, that work well on Pinterest drive lots of traffic back to blogs outside of the internet marketing niche. And that doesn't mean that you can't do internet marketing products or internet marketing blogs back to your website. But these particular ones don't necessarily work extremely well. Now, there's one other thing that you want to take note of when you start talking about trying to drive traffic with Pinterest. You want to follow people based on your interests. So one of the things you're going to do is you're going to do a search just as you would in any other social platform. And you want to find out the people who are interested in your particular subject. And what you're going to do is you're going to follow these people so that they have the opportunity to follow you back and to see your pins. Of course, this is the in, in this respect, you have Pinterest that has its own algorithm and how many times people are going to see your pins. But what you are trying to do is to connect to people who are going to be interested in your offer. So when you do a search like this, you're going to find people who are interested in these low carb uh, meals. Right. So these are going to be ideal people if you have a low carb offer. Right, that you want to connect to because you want to start showing them images of things that they have expressed an interest in. You want to make sure that the people that are connecting back to you, they're going to see some of these images that they are going to be interested in. So that's the way you find people that are going to be interested in the topic or the subject that you are marketing in. And then you want to then show them images that will lead them back to your website just like we did in the other uh, in the other screen there one of the other ways that you can find out find other people who are going to be interested in your particular subject is to click the boards area and start following these boards because this is going to give you uh, images and it's going to give you the people who are commenting on those images because those are going to be the people that once again you want to connect with and you want to connect with them as 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 their interest grows in the subject because you obviously want them to opt into your list you want them to buy from you once they are on your uh, email marketing list okay the last thing you're going to connect with of course you're going to connect with pinners okay these are people that uh, pin about things that are low carb once again you want to look inside of these boards and their followers consider that following as a community because those are going to be the people again that you want to connect with with your subject matter and Pinterest is a great way to do that because people gather around uh, from the perspective of looking at images and not necessarily written content and so they are shared more readily on social media and you are going to get more exposure uh, to your postings okay but the key is to make sure to use the search from the beginning and to get relevant people added to your Pinterest board. And as you get more and more relevant people, you'll start to see more and more relevant results when you go into Pinterest and meeting people for the first time and being able to connect with them. You want to make the most of your time on Pinterest and social media. So Pinterest is like any other social network. Your task is to make people interested in your images, make them interested in your profile, and then get them clicking on your images because those images are going to take them back to your website directly. Remember, you want to make sure that you're linking directly to a page where they can take some kind of action. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. You're looking at the social network LinkedIn, and LinkedIn is obviously for professionals. And what you're going to be doing on LinkedIn is you are going to be looking for people who are interested in buying what it is that you're selling, people who are interested in reading your content, and people who will be likely to opt into your list when they come to your website. So you start first, of course, with context, and you are going to look 
for in the search area, you're going to start by looking for groups. Because there are really three ways of driving traffic from LinkedIn back to your site. Um, that is to get people interested in you and your offers from groups. That is to get them interested from your news feed. And that is also to get them interested from your interaction. So let's first look for the right kind of groups. And so we're going to just put in marketing. We could put in here internet marketing and then click and then click search. Now remember, you are going to run into a fair number of product sellers in addition to product buyers. So most of the people who are going who you're going to run into in some of these groups are going to be like you. They're going to be looking for opportunities where they can get people back to their website in order to sell to them. So part of your strategy is going to be to talk to people like you and you're going to find groups by doing your searches where you're going to find those individuals. Now another way to do your search is to think about those places who have a need for the product that you have or the service that you have that may not necessarily start with your particular name. So in other words, you might not look for internet marketing. Well, who has a need for internet marketing? Well, small businesses do. Uh, other kinds of consultants do. Uh, authors do. Speakers do. All of these people need to know about internet marketing. And so you want to participate not only in internet marketing groups, and you're going to see that here on the sidebar. I'm just going to click groups. Now, because I want you to think about, in addition to looking for people inside of the internet marketing niche, you also want to look for people who have a need for what you have. And you want to find these groups and join them. It's pretty simple. And you're going to interact and help people. Now, one of the reasons why the strategy that I'm telling you about is helpful because if you find, if you get inside of internet marketing groups, most of the people there, they're going to always already know what you know. So you're not going to necessarily be helping people who are going to be looking for you in order to come back to your website. You are going to be wanting to look for people who are not going to know what you know and who are going to find your information, your knowledge helpful. So you start by doing your search and you start by looking for groups and you start by making connections to people inside of those groups. Okay, now another thing that you're going to want to do is to take a look at your profile. I'm going to go to the profile area here and click edit profile. You're going to get the opportunity to put in a great deal of information regarding your summary of who you are and your experience. Now, here is what you want to put in these areas, such as summary and experience. You basically want to put copywriting in here where you talk about the chief benefit of what you're offering if you're offering internet marketing products or productivity products that will help you to make more money you want to make sure that you have that copy in your service and your summary and experience your summary and experience should read more like a sales letter than a resume so you should have those things inside of your profile because that will really drive people back to your website. So in your summary, in your, uh, in your experience, you should have headline, chief benefit, and call to action minimum. You can also include other elements of your sales letter. And to your call to action should be to have people visit you at your website. Now, you're going to get another opportunity, of course, to share your content. And one of the best ways to share your content is to do it through your news feed. Now, depending on who your people are, whether or not they're going to read your news feed or not, they do get these updates in their email. So there will be opportunities for your update to be seen by someone that you've connected with that is relevant. Now, there are a couple of different things that you're going to, you're going to do when you share your content. Now, let's take a look at them here. Now, one way is we're going to just simply add an update. And we're going to share this content with those individuals that are in our news feed. Now, we're going to click the share button here, and that's going to make, make it available to everyone who is part of our connection inside of our LinkedIn network. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can also share this content with those people who we are in groups with as well as other individuals uh, outside of our network so let's take a look by clicking that share button 
and you'll notice a couple of things here we're going to be able to share this now we said we're going to be able to share this with specific individuals right so we can start typing in the names and email addresses of specific individuals so when we start thinking about things that we want to offer specific individuals and we have groups of them we can send specific articles specific content to them that will get them to our website we can also post this inside of groups the groups that we are part of specifically now when we do that we do not want to do this um, on a continual basis and we don't want to do it every day remember uh, the 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 the, uh, the the way to do business in social media still stands jab 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 right hook so this is not something that you want to do every day which is share a link to your website because people will then start to tune you out as someone else who is just another seller Now, what are you trying to do inside of the groups? Well, you want to find a group where you can provide expert help, where people will want to come back to your website. In short, that's really what you're trying to do. And that's one of the reasons why you may or may not be able to go inside of an affiliate marketing group or a, uh, or a startup marketing group and get the audience that you really want everyone's going to be trying to do the same thing you might be able to get your product offer in there you might be able to get some service unique service offer in front of people briefly but your audience is not going to be as they're not going to be and find you as unique as they might find you in a group where they're not as many people like you offering the same product or service so what you're trying to do inside of the group is attract people to your website based on the things that you share and you're going to be doing that inside of uh, you're going to be doing that inside of the um, discussions now I'm going to show you a discussion inside of affiliate marketing however you're going to have to find the groups where people are going to want to hear what you have to say and that they are going to find what you say helpful Okay, this is, the, this is an example of a discussion. It's not necessarily a discussion that's going to help you because, once again, it's affiliate marketing. But if you, con if you find the discussions that are going to be helpful for you inside of your niche, you'll be able to comment, and you're commenting as an expert. You are looking for those opportunities to comment as an expert because that's when people are going to want to find out about your profile. That's when people are going to want to find out about your website, and they're going to take your posting seriously. Okay, so really, as you get inside of LinkedIn, it's no different than the other social network. You want to make connections, and you want to get inside of these professional groups and to be seen as an expert so that people will come back to look at your website and your profile. Of course, you are going to be posting, and you're going to do all the other things you do on social networks, but the primary method that you're going to be using is to position yourself as an expert on LinkedIn with those that need your product and or service okay and so everything starts with the search process so with that thanks and I will see you in the next video okay hello and welcome back to this introduction to YouTube video marketing we're going to be talking about some of the elements you're going to need to have in all of your videos in order to get traffic. Now you're going to be looking to get traffic from both YouTube and organic search, but primarily from YouTube. And we're going to type in low carb dieting. And then we're going to also do an internet marketing term also. So we're going to type in low carb diet. And we're going to look that up. Now, w one of the things you're going to see here is you're going to see some videos that are here with various titles. And what you want to find out here and what you want to take note of is how these titles are being written, what's happening on the inside of the video to help it to be considered to be relevant for a particular term. Now, you may choose a different term but the elements are still going to be the same. You want to make sure that you've got some or all of the relevant keywords in the title of your video. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about low carb dieting, the word ketogenic is considered to be one of the key keywords uh, that you would be using 
um, if you were going to talk about low carb dieting. And what you're also going to find out here is that if you take a look at the description area, you've got content here, almost like a mini article. And you do want to do that. As a matter of fact, Google gives you 5,000 characters to put here in the description. A lot, quite a bit, enough to be considered to be an article. You want to use all of that real estate to put a relevant article in there, original content, and with links to various sites that are going to give your viewer the maximum opportunity to get the information that you are placing. Naturally, you're going to want to make sure that you've got a link to your website in the content. And typically, you might put that link first in your content. It might be the first thing that you would have people to see because what is happening is Google is giving you information or giving the, the viewer information on each video in terms of what it is the video is going to be about. Now, what you want to do here is you want to make sure that your title is relevant. You want to make sure that you have content that is relevant. Now, you'll notice here that there are not uh, a lot of tags. Now, you can also tag your video with tags that are keywords that you want people to find or that you want people to see when they're finding your video, right? So you want to make sure that you're using all of the real estate that Google gives you. Now, I'm showing you this from the standpoint of video. I'm going to show you this from the inside of actually creating a video. Okay, you're going to notice the inside of the video. Now, in your title area, you want to make sure that you have a relevant keyword in your title that is descriptive, that tells the user what your video is going to be about. You also want to have your description. You don't want to stuff keywords in the description. You want to make sure that the description is very accurate in terms of what's going to be in the video as well as information that the viewer is going to need in order to be successful using the information. Don't try to seed and stuff keywords in the, in the description area. The algorithm is much smarter than it used to be. You want to make sure that you are informative to those that are viewing your video. Now, the other thing that you're going to have available here is you're going to have tags. And you will write in your tags. Like, for instance, I'm going to type in low-carb diet. And as soon as you hit a comma, after that, you'll see that it turns into a tag. You want to put as many relevant tags in that area as you can. Once again, don't stuff the area. And don't you don't have to put lots of variations of your tag in there. You want to make sure that you have all of the relevant tags. And the way to think about this is... What do I want? What keywords do I want people to use to find this video? If you think about things that way, then you'll be looking to create your video and attract them with the right kind of information. One thing that you also want to do in order to make sure your video is optimized properly, you want to make sure that you enter a transcript. Now, in some cases, writing a transcript is not going to be possible, especially if your video was created in an unscripted fashion. Now, this is one good reason for you to consider using a script to create your video because you want to be able to add it to the captions area so that you will be able to... Uh, basically give Google the opportunity to show your video to those who are hearing impaired. Now, it has been uh, it, it has been stated that this allows videos to rank uh, to rank better. Google has denied this to be the case and others have necessary have not necessarily endorsed this. However, those who rank videos on a regular basis always include captions. So this is what you want to try to do whenever it is possible. Okay, you're now looking at the channel area. And this is another thing you're going to want to optimize. And the way you're going to do this is you're going to go to the About section. And in the About section, you're going to want to write the things that are going, that are going to be keyword optimized. And you want to make sure that they describe what your subject matter, what your niche is. You want to use as much real estate as you can without keyword stuffing. Now, in this area is where you are going to give your channel the best opportunity to rank when people are looking for certain subjects. And you want your channel to be as relevant as you can possibly make it. The other thing you want to make sure that you've got here are your links. 
your links should lead people back to your website. Now that's going to be a very important thing for you to do because you are then going to be able then to have people come back, check out your profile, click on your link, and then be taken to your website. And that is what you want because that will really drive traffic when people take that route to looking at your videos and checking out your channel. So in addition to checking to making sure that your videos are optimized, you also want to make sure that this section in particular of their channel is optimized. Now, one of the other things that you can do is you can and I'm going to go to the home section of your video channel. You can actually put together a channel trailer and a channel trailer will give your visitors who come to take a look at your uh, you know at your channel it'll give them the opportunity for you to tell them exactly what they're going to see in all your other videos and if you have videos that are are centered around the subject this is going to be a great way for you to introduce people to the other videos now we're going to be getting into how you do video marketing in some of the other videos but these are the very bare bones essentials that you must have in place in order to do the best you can of having your videos to be found both in YouTube as well as in the organic search results of Google Okay, so now really, um, if you've done those steps, if you have undertaken making sure that your about section is optimized and that your video channel or your videos are optimized in terms of title, description, and tags, you pretty much are in a good position to start looking at the particulars of video marketing. So, with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video. Hello and welcome back. We are looking at the website YouTube, which is the video sharing site, and we're going to be talking about YouTube not from the perspective of video. We are ending our series right now on social methods of traffic. And as you as you know, as we conclude, realize that, you know, once again, context is important, connecting is important, consistency is important. All those things are important and one of the ways that you're going to be able to do this is that you're going to want to interact on all these social networks and <clears throat> even as you put video content on YouTube and even as you structure it right for people to find it and we're going to be talking about that in other videos you also want to be social in the very same way that you would be on any social network part of what you are going to be doing is you want people to be interested in you so that they will click back to your uh, your profile I'm gonna click on this one uh, video and uh, when I did a search for how to create a WordPress blog something that you know, many marketers and lots of individuals we're gonna stop that video we're gonna stop that video now, interestingly, I mean, obviously, this video has lots of views, but what makes this view, or what makes this video, uh, I'd say, uh, significant, is you're going to see this individual, and you see how he is interacting with those who comment on his video. And one of the things that you are going to want to do is you are going to want to be interactive over every piece of content that you place on YouTube. A number of marketers place content on sites like YouTube, but they neglect the social aspect. And this is a huge part of developing authority. And so you want to be on the front end of generating more and more momentum by commenting on the comments that you're getting not only do you want to do that on your content you also want to do that on the content in areas where people are actually doing something that you are an expert in so in particular just because this is Tyler Moore's video if I'm a WordPress expert there's nothing from stopping me from ans asking a question. Here's a question. What do you think of Blogger? Could I just make as much money on their ads as having a website like this? 
Now, I could very well answer that question too, and I would I could answer that question based on my experience. I could answer that question based on my expertise. There really is no limit on what I can do, and if I answer that question, this is going to provide a clickable link back to my Google Plus profile. Now, we're going to be talking about Google Plus um, in the sense that you do want to make sure that your profile has your website in it because you want people to become interested in who you are. And you can do that in the very same way that you would do this in LinkedIn, in Facebook, in Twitter. You want to express your expertise over things that you can answer. So you want to find problems and situations where you have some level of expertise. You want to have, you want to find uh, videos that are highly viewed, and you want to comment there. You want to put your discussion in the ring. Now, what you should have in addition to this, when you do this and you're commenting on a video like this, you may want to make sure you've got video content of your own. We're going to be talking about that in this course. We're going to be talking about that in the video unit. But you want to use YouTube as a social network to get traffic back to your website and you do that in your commenting the other thing you do is you connect one of the ways that you can connect is you can connect to people by subscribing to their channel right popular subscriptions now why would you do that because this person's videos are going to you're going to get notification of this person's videos as they come out they're very popular and they tend to be in your area of expertise where you want to be commenting on those videos the other thing you can do obviously is you can go to the person's channel and you can find out if there is discussion there for example if this person has discussion you can enter into discussion right there on their channel and you can generate and you'll notice there is discussion here you can discuss you can you can find out if they've got other playlists you can participate with this individual so you want to participate with individuals that are going to give you the opportunity to express your level of expertise to express the things that you know in order to be helpful to people to position yourself as an expert in your subject and how are you going to do this well, of course you are going to do this by making sure that you're using the search parameters now one of the interesting things we're going to be talking about this in another video is that YouTube has a suggest feature now what does that mean that means then that if I type in the first few words or the letters you will find out what the most recent searches about a particular subject have been WordPress tutorials for beginners WordPress tutorial for beginners this is what people are searching for so if you are an expert in these areas or you might want to become expert in these areas WordPress Bangla WordPress theme development tutorial all of these are things that you can develop in your level of expertise if you can't you can always go and either purchase a resale rights product and learn the content you can make sure it's on your blog but these are things that you can do in order to interact on the social network YouTube well here's an example of low carb dieting and you could go and you can if you if your product is one and your website and your your web presence is about low carb dieting these are some videos that you can start interacting on you can notice that there are some very popular videos where you can be part of the discussion and you want to use this in that way right you want to talk about those things that you actually know or things that you have experienced now when you do that you want to make sure that your video channel um, your profile is completely filled out your Google Plus profile is completely filled out and you also want to make sure that you have videos on your level of expertise on whatever your area of expertise is okay so really in the strategy that you're going to social strategy for YouTube is to first comment on videos is to comment on channels and to interact with everyone who makes comments on your videos and channels of course one of the things that you can do 
always is you can like and share videos. When a person is going to interact with you, they are a lot, less, a lot more likely to interact with you, not only if you subscribe to their channel, but if you like their video. And you can do that here. Right? Just click the like button. And of course, you can share the video also. But once again, remember, this is being social. This is interacting with the people who are commenting on YouTube. And because everyone's profile is now connected to their Google Plus account, you'll see the necessity and the power of being involved, at least knowledgeable, about how Google Plus works. Okay, so that's really it for YouTube as a social network. Now, we will be making the transition into the practical step-by-step -step videos where we take steps to get traffic to our website. And we're actually going to start with YouTube video. And since that is a major way uh, for you to be able to get traffic to your site, our few, next few videos will be talking about the things that you'll need to put in place and to do on a consistent basis to get traffic to your website using video and YouTube. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the next video.